Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. We are continuing our July sermon series about recharging our lives, and today's theme is about letting nature teach us a thing or two. At Woodcliffe, we strive to celebrate joyfully, care deeply, and to make a difference for those in our faith community and in the world around us. I'd like to thank our worship team this morning. You may have noticed we had a pianist here this morning. If you haven't met her yet, that's Nigel's wife, Elizabeth. So thank you for, for uh, honoring us with your gifts this morning. And we'd like to thank Charlotte and Nigel on tech, Kathy and her team on hospitality, and Tom Standerwick for, for reading this morning. But before we start, let's go ahead and light our Christ candle. So I invite you to take a moment to breathe and drop into your hearts and just become present to God while I light the candle and then we'll say a prayer. Gracious God, we hear your voice calling to us to be present to this time, to come away from distractions and busyness, to come away from stress and worries, to come away from self-doubt or judgment of others, and to come now and worship you so our faith may be strengthened and we may know how much we are loved. Remind us that we are your children. Fill our hearts with hope and encouragement and bless us with your guidance and wisdom so that we can be blessed to be a blessing. Amen. What is land acknowledgement? What is land acknowledgement? Those of us that are continuing our oral history are blessed. What Those we of us that are continuing our oral history are blessed. What we shared, that was told from way back. We were part of the ecosystem. We were not masters of it. You know, after we grow up from our biological mothers, the earth becomes our caregiver. Everything that we need is there. We were raised to believe that everything has a spirit, and that everything around us is alive and has a purpose. The spirit of the land and our spirit. You can't separate land and people. In Treaty 7 territory, I'm accepted, I'm something, and I'm with my people. We honor our ancestors by acknowledging Treaty 7 territory. We acknowledge the Treaty 7 nations, the Pikani First Nation, the Siksaga First Nation, the Ghana First Nation, Stony Nakoda First Nations, and the Sutina First Nation. We acknowledge the ancestral territory of the Siksigaitsitipi, the Blackfoot Confederacy, and the home of Métis Region Number 3. So I invite you now to take a moment to greet each other with the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you.
We love each other, don't we? Yeah. Join me in the call to worship. The kingdom of God is like... The kingdom of God is like... The kingdom of God is like... The kingdom of God is growing in ways we can't even begin to notice or imagine. I invite you now to stand in body or spirit to sing our first hymn. things I like to include in my prayers is my wow moments. Do you know what wow moments are? No. Those are the moments when you're struck with awe or wonder, where you go, wow. Right? You see the morning sun and it's that beautiful sky and you go, wow, God. Right? So I was thinking of my wow moments this week. I spent some time with some lovely people out in the front yard. We were doing some nature journaling. And they went off and they connected with nature and they came back and they were sharing. And I thought, wow, God, wow, look what they noticed. Look at how nature spoke to these people. And if you missed that, I hope you're going to join me in the next Lift Your Spirit event coming up, not this week, but the week after. And every day I look out my window and the sky, maybe it's just because I'm back in Calgary, but that blue sky and those clouds, I just explained, you know, exclaimed, wow, God, what a beautiful day this is. So I was wondering what wow moments you've had this week. I'm going to grab my mic, and I'm going to come down there like Donahue, <laughs> and I'm going to ask some people. And if you'd like to tell me about a wow moment you had, just in a sentence, We don't need a whole paragraph this morning. But just in a sentence, put up your hand, okay? Okay, don't want to terrify anybody. Anybody got a wow moment here in the... In this... You do, Tina. I wake up in the morning and I think another beautiful day and I can still get up and walk and do all the things I want to do. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have one. In oh. Kathy. Watching the prairie chickens out front in the evening. You have prairie chickens? Wow. Okay. Wow. That's a wow. Oh, we have Janet. My grandson made his bed. <laughs> that's a wow moment. All right. Last year, the bunnies uh, clipped my lettuce off right at ground level. This year, I've got two complete rows. I think that's a wow well moment. That is a wow well moment. Yeah, the bunnies have left your lettuce alone. OK, I'm going to this side. Anybody got a wow? You got a wow, Carly? Morning sunsets over the mountains. The best, right? The best. OK. The gorgeous full moon uh, when I was down at the stampede and all the fireworks were going off and here's the moon. It was That's beautiful. The moon. The moon. Sorry? Oh, one more at the end here. All right. Sandy. Releasing butterflies in memoriam of people who've died at my husband's care home. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Wow, for sure. Yeah. Okay, last chance on this side. We, we saw two deer by a, a mountain stream when we were out on a hike on Friday. So beautiful. God's creatures, right? Yeah. So I hope that you'll include your wow moments to thank God for when God has a way of connecting with us. We pause. We stop. Look how much gratitude there was. Right? Yeah. And I hope you'll share them, especially with me. Thank you. Ask the animals and they will teach you the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of God has done this? In his hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So let me ask you, who's enjoying summer so far? Yeah, yeah, pretty much all of us, hey? Summer is a good time to head out to nature to reflect, to renew and refresh. Whether you're digging your toes into the sand or your hands into the earth or hiking in those beautiful mountains, this is one of the best seasons to enjoy creation. It's a time to let the beauty of God's world bless us and touch our hearts. Do you remember being a child? Maybe you were lying in the grass watching a caterpillar wiggle across the earth. Or just laying in the grass and looking up, looking at those beautiful fluffy clouds that pass by. Or maybe you liked looking up at the stars at night or the moon. Right? Maybe you felt very small looking up at that big beautiful moon. Well, nature has the power to cause us to pause and be still. Some of us of our biggest well moments come from nature those beautiful sunrises or sunsets, incredible flowers, the majestic trees, the breathtaking whales, or I get to look out my window and see these little amusing little squirrels that seem to play all day long. It always brings a smile to my face. For centuries, monks and mystics and other people have drawn inspiration from the natural world. 
St. Patrick, for instance, first learned to pray outside during his years as a slave. Nature somehow had summoned deep, deep prayers from within him. And eventually it was how he learned to hear God, how he learned to listen to God. The Celtic tradition recognized that nature is God's first revelation and that the whole of life is an expression of God. There was an emphasis on the goodness of creation, an emphasis on all of life being sacramental. The Incarnation was a living and breathing concept, felt most keenly in creation, among the trees, the mountains, the oceans, and the rivers. For many of us, St. Francis is probably the one that comes to mind when we think of someone who connected to nature, who really connected to that beauty and that solace in nature. Abby Fowell Brown from the Book of Saints and Friendly Beasts says sometimes Francis preached by candlelight, the candlelight of the stars. And often the trees were like a cloister that were along the roadside that made up his chapel. And the blue sky was the only roof between him and the heavens. His choir was the birds in the branches and his congregation was a group of beasts. For Francis, all of creation was seen as continually offering praise to God. The great and the powerful sea, the wide sky, the creatures, the sacred trees, the force of the wind and the rain, all were seen as participating in a liturgy of praise to God. Francis believed that when people waken to the Holy Presence in each flower, each tree, each bird, they suddenly discovered that they too were part of this beautiful community and it changed them and transformed them. They found themselves nourished and supported in ways they hadn't experienced before. Well, all of us have access to nature's beauty and wisdom and compassion and yet in our busy and high-tech lives we might have lost the ability to listen, to feel, to sense the beautiful world. We may just use nature as backdrops for our activities rather than simply enjoying nature for itself. Or we may find ourselves so busy we don't even get out in nature. But it's good for our souls to get out in the woods, to get out in the open meadows, to go to the sandy beaches, to go to the mystical mountains, and to find wild spaces. Connecting with nature not only helps us feel better emotionally, it apparently contributes to our physical well-being. Dozens of studies have shown that it can reduce blood pressure, heart rates, muscle tension, and lower stress. And the connection we have with the natural world seems to contribute to our happiness. Just a few moments in nature can perk up a tired brain or change a mood. If you're having one of those days, just go outside, see what happens. Even the sounds of nature can really help, right? The crickets chirping, the sound of a babbling brook, the crashing of those ocean waves, right? They're so soothing. And some of us like the peaceful serenade of the morning birds that can remind us to get up, start the day. In the mystical traditions, it was believed that creation was the first testament of God. If you wanted to know who God was or is, you just had to explore and connect with nature. Many of the well-known Christian mystics urged people to understand the sacredness of all living things, to realize that we're interconnected, interrelated, and to grasp the importance of tending and caring for the earth and all its creatures. We'd only listened. Most of us didn't listen to those mystics. We might be in a very different place today. Pierre Terrier de Chardin, a French priest and scientist, explained that the deeper we move into the mystery of any created thing, the closer we come to the divine presence. So perhaps we can hear the invitation today to jump off the hamster wheel of busyness, to take that time in nature, can say, 
my minister told me I should do this. It's a prescription. It's good for my soul. Because everything in creation can become a catalyst for deepening our understanding. The forest can bring enlightenment. The hummingbird, if we stop and watch them, might reveal secrets to us. Each pine cone can divulge secrets or mysteries. The wind might encourage us to release something we've been grasping onto. The sky, when we look up, might encourage us to expand our thinking. Nature has a lot of wisdom to share with us. When we're committed to being present in the here and now, we can nurture our capacity to see those wow moments, to experience the holy, to connect. We might even discover the kingdom of God is among us all the time. It might change how we deal with life. One of my favorite quotes from the Bible was read today, so beautifully read. Ask the animals and they will teach you. The birds of the air and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. So I wonder what we learn from animals. Well, I asked a few friends this week and they responded that they learned unconditional love from their pets. Their pet doesn't care what they look like, whether their hair is done, whether they've cleaned the house, or if they have their act together. They're just loved by their pets. One person described how much she loves walking with her dog. Her golden retriever joyfully greets everyone who walks by and without words seems to be saying to each person, don't you think this life is amazing? Isn't it a wonderful, wonderful day? She said, people always smile when they encounter her dog. But she said that doesn't happen to her all the time. And she went on to talk about the last time she went grocery store shopping and said she wasn't treated that way at all in the grocery store. <laughs> well, Thomas Merton said the trees and the animals have no problem being who they are. The animals don't waste trying or waste time trying to be who they're not. The trees don't go off to find themselves. They simply are who they are created to be. And in that witness, they reveal a path of yielding, of not resisting, of simply allowing their lives to unfold. Well, the Bible is full of childlike wonder and awe for nature. We hear Moses praising the great creator for the universe. David in the Psalms expresses awe by saying, the whole of earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, when evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. And Jesus urged his followers to consider the birds and the lilies to see what they could teach them about God's care and God's love. Even the first story in the Bible tells us how God created and breathed life. I never tire of hearing that story of how God loved each part of God's creation. And I know it's just a story. And science has a different way to tell that story of how life began, but it doesn't diminish that beauty of that story in our Bible. It reminds me that God loved God's world, that God loves our world, all of it, all of it. Even the nasty spiders, even the things that wiggle, all of it. And it reminds me, oh, I'm loved doesn't matter how I am, I'm loved. So, I invite you to spend some time this summer imagining the world around you as a sacred book full of wisdom. Allow the seasons, the elements, the creatures, the landscape, and the weather to offer you revelations of the sacred. Invite each of you to seek some time in creation. Remember, it's a prescription from your minister. You're supposed to do this. Listen to the birds, to the wind, to the flowers. Marvel at the sea creatures if you go near an ocean. Explore those forests. Spend some time just looking up at the sky. 
and notice all the wow moments. I invite you to play and to dream, to waste time, to laugh, to be silly, to become a child again. And I pray you'll let nature help you slow down and renew and refresh your life. Let's pray. Holy One, we bring our prayers to you now. Thank you for hearing our requests, the ones we can name and the ones that are very deep in our hearts. We pray prayers of thanksgiving for all the blessings of life. And we take a moment to name those now silently in our heart. We pray aching prayers of pain and sorrow, prayers of worry, prayers of fear. And we name those people we carry silently in our own hearts. We know your light shines in the darkness. And so we ask your love and your light to shine on situations in our world that are filled with violence, hatred, abuse, destruction, oppression, and devastation. And we take a moment to name those places in the world that are on our hearts. We pray for Woodcliffe United Church, and we ask for your guidance and wisdom as we move into our new beginning. Empower and strengthen the staff, the leaders, and all those who give of their time and energy. Fill us all with your grace and your love, and help us to dedicate ourselves to your holy purposes. And let's take a moment to pause to offer our own prayers for our faith community or for our own faith journey. And Holy One, help us to release all that we've left undone. Help us to release and let go of our fear, our anxiety, our impatience, and our guilt and our pain. Help us to let go of everything that pulls us away from you, O God, and fill us instead with your love and your light. And let's take a moment to pray for ourselves and our own needs. God of love and light, open our hearts to receive your loving spirit, open our minds to receive your wisdom, open our hands to show others your loving compassion, and together let us join in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Mother, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to stand in body or spirit to sing our next hymn.
One of our beliefs as the United Church is that we are not alone, we live in God's world. And because we do, we are gifted with the joy and the opportunity to care for one another and to care for God's world. Your offerings of time and treasure help us be a church, help us to be all that we can be. So thank you for your donations. Let us now present our offering. Let's pray. Holy One, we bring these gifts as a symbol of our openness to your spirit of truth and love, your spirit of justice and peace, your spirit of life stirring within us and our world. Help us to flourish and thrive as a church so that we can make a difference in your world. Amen. So please join us outside for coffee and conversation after the worship service. Did you notice when you came in those lovely new picnic tables? We want to thank Property Committee for that and for Evan for setting them up for us. Should we do a little clap? Everybody is welcome. While we're saying thank you, we thought we should say a nice thank you to Cliff for his diligence in keeping our grounds watered for getting our trees watered. He's worked really hard all week, and I think you've been here at least twice a day, haven't you? (laughs) And then, of course, Lift Your Spirit Tuesdays continue on July 26th at 1 o'clock with Lectio. That's the art of sacred reading. So please sign up for that using the link in the messenger or by connecting with the office. And that one will be inside. So if that makes a difference to you. Our stewardship committee is busy organizing a fabulous online auction and celebration as part of our 65th anniversary. The auction will raise funds to better serve our church and community at large. Bidding on items will start mid-September and will accumulate with a celebration and evening on October 1st. More details will follow in the coming weeks. In the meantime, please consider what you could what you can do that would be of value to others. For example, a dozen cookies a week, a week, yummy. A monthly letter, who doesn't want that? Lawn mowing, storybook time, or handmade items. You might also have some treasures you'd like to donate. For example, we have a donation of a wood-carved box. We'd also love a couple of big feature items. For example, a holiday home week. Thank you for sharing your gifts with Woodcliffe and helping to make this fundraiser effort a success. Now I invite you to stand in body or spirit to sing Go Now in Peace.
you go forth knowing you are a child of God, that you are known, that you are precious, that you are loved and forgiven. Go forth for the love of God is yours to share, the peace of Christ is yours to extend, and the power of the Spirit is yours to offer. Amen. The first verse.